Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, Buckeye Blessed here again. Uh, I'm gonna go through the lower receiver this time. Um, last time we talked about the upper half of the gun, I included the buffer tube, the buffer spring, and the stock on that. And that's all this bad boy. And the reason is because I wanted to include the operation of the upper receiver and differences in the buffer springs and the buffers. There are options for recoil reduction systems on that. Um, as I stated in the um, uh, last video, but for right now, we're going to go with the lower receiver. Now, to start it off, there are two main types of lower receivers. Um, there is the completed lower receiver, which is this one. It's got everything milled out, everything's good. Um, you buy this, you have to do a background check, it has a serial number on it. You get it at a store, um, or if you buy it from somebody, you don't have to do a background check. Um, if it's a I'm going to call it a backyard sale. Anytime you buy one from another person, if you buy it from any store uh, that has an FFL, you will have to do a background check and you will have to, they will have to have a license and you'll probably end up paying like 20 bucks for it. The other option is this. This is an 80% lower. What that means is, uh, let's get in there, there is no milled out trigger assembly. In the state of Ohio and the federal government, the ATF, has designated as not a firearm. Now, if you'll notice the safe, the rear pin and the front pin, along with the um, mag release and everything is milled out. The safety selector and the, and also the, the grip is milled out. The safety selector and the trigger guard have not been milled. I will have to do that when I do this. There are several ways to do that. You can use a bench press drill. You can use a router. Uh, normally what you do is you use the bench press drill to drill down and it drills the holes and you have guys 80%lower.com or something like that has um, they're not sponsoring this video so not going to go too much into them but they're one company that offer options uh, you can use them they send and they sell the bit, bits and mills and everything that's actually where I got this one um, these run me about $75 each but they're ghost guns that's what they mean by ghost guns they have no serial number there's no registry for them um, and they are same as this one. Just a standard mill spec lower. There's no uh, frills about them. So what you'll do is you'll drill the holes out, then you'll use a router. Um, some guys will just use the, dr the drill press to just do all of it. But if you use a router, you slowly go down farther and farther down into the um, lower until you've drilled out everything you need to. And there are guides and they have templates for that. Uh, as for this one, well, in this option, there are dozens of sub options. There's different qualities. Most of them are aluminum. Um, there are different types. Um, you can get them coated in different ways. Uh, I just found out that there's a new type out that's uh, kind of trying to figure out where I think it was Rainy Arms that was selling it. Um, I think I had it saved somewhere. I think it's on the phone. My wife is currently using to record. Um, but it was a new type of aluminum. It was like 60-65, but it was ion. Uh, it's supposed to be lighter weight, but stronger than 70-75 or any of the other uh, mil spec lowers. It's supposed to be lighter weight, but a lot stronger. I don't know why you would need that, but I want it. I want to try it. My wife is saying no. no. But at any rate, there are multiple different types of lower receivers. Now, when I say lower receiver, this is your lower receiver. This shape right here that's it it does not include the lower parts kit that I have assembled on this or the trigger guard it is literally the bare bones lower receiver it is a shell of the lower that's the only part of an AR you need to have a serial number and a background check for um, if you get an 80% it's not a firearm according to the ATF so you don't even need a uh, serial number on it now some states if you get this require you put a serial number on it and some I think have banned it but Ohio has not, so we're still cool. Um, but what do you do when you have your 80% lower? What you do is you get a lower parts kit, trigger kit. Uh, they have drop-in full set trigger kits. I've been told that a lot of trigger kits, um, I had an ATG, you can get anti-walk pins. And what that is, as you'll see up here, they have two little circles with a line going in between and they have their little pins that screw in and hold the trigger in place. Uh, like Timney, higher end triggers don't need those. But if you get one like ATG, you get the great feeling trigger without that extremely high price tag. I think they run like 80 bucks. Timmy is around 200 to 300. Uh, so if you get a higher end trigger, 
you won't need the anti-walk pins like Giselle. But if you use the lower end uh, aftermarket triggers that are still really good triggers, you can feel them. This is a Palmetto State. Uh, I think this is a Palmetto, it might be an Anderson, but it's probably at a eight to nine, five, seven, eight, nine pound trigger pull. Yeah, right around there. It's crisp, but it's got weight to it. So, but when you're assembling it, the reason I was holding it is because if you pull this trigger without a safety in there on, on safe, if you pull this trigger, watch what happens to that pin. It'll slam forward into this part and it could break, it could crack, it could do stupid stuff. So don't let that happen. Don't pull the trigger and let that slam forward. If you have an upper and a bulkhead group in it, you're fine, but do not let that slam forward. So I'm gonna leave it up for now, which is why I was up in the first place. Now. Once you get your lower, you're going to want your parts kit. That includes the trigger. That includes your mag release button. I'm going to show you that. If you don't know what that is, you really have a lot of work to do to build your AR. 556 five, magazine. Slide your magazine in. You push that button right there. As I said, mag release button. Releases your magazine. They do have extended magazine release buttons. They have options for all of this. Safety selector switch, they've got thousands of different styles and options. Grips, which my grip that I was utilizing is right around here somewhere. Where'd it go? It's probably right in front of my face and I'm just not seeing it. I guarantee you it's right in front of my face. Because I literally was looking at it this morning and trying to figure something else out. And yet, I can't seem to keep track of anything. So, oh, literally right in front of my face. Your grip, after you put in your safety selector switch and everything, it's gonna go right in here. This is uh, over molded. Uh, it was done by, um, who was it? I'll remember later and tell you, might even be on it. Fab Defense, that's right, Fab Defense. This is actually their podium bipod grip, but, um, yeah, so you get your lower parts kit, you end up getting your uh, center trigger, usually a trigger guard in there, mag release, both pins, this is a takedown pin. What you're gonna do, this is your front takedown pin, you will have a rear. Your entire upper is gonna go on just like that to give you a reference point. When you pull that trigger, as I said, the upper receiver goes to work. Now, how does this play into the gun? The trigger affects your accuracy, hands down, bar none. If your trigger is heavy and it's awkward and bulky, you're going to have a hard time keeping the gun steady when you pull that trigger. Um, the type of magazines you use can also have an impact on the load. Um, it also will have a big impact on the caliber. Now, AR-15s are universal, in I'm not going to say universal, but this one is fairly universal in caliber. It's a multi-caliber. Which means this one receiver uh, can do, let me see if I remember, you can do 556223, um, which is standard AR-15. This one's actually a 556223. CMMG offers a conversion kit. This is a 556 bulk carrier group. Um, if I take this out and put in their conversion kit and use their conversion magazines, I can turn this gun into a 22. Uh, you know, it would know until you fire it or take out the mags. You can then, um, if you wanted to do something different, you can do 350 Legend, which is what I'm going to build this into. Um, you can do, oh, and the other option for doing this, I mentioned you have multiple ways, but I only said that you had the, to mill it yourself with a router and a drill press. Well, you can also do something like a Ghost Gunner machine, CNC, um, if you're willing to go that route. That machine, the Ghost Gunner is like 1500 bucks. I would die for one. No, I wouldn't die for one. I would love one, but I wouldn't die for it. My wife would kill me if I tried to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, see. Um, but that's another option that you have is to go with a ghost gunner. Uh, that is a mini CNC lathe that you put it in. It has all the brackets and everything. You put it all in, set it up, and it will go down and CNC it all out for you. You hook it up to your computer, put the program in. It is open source programs. Again, they are not, um, they are not, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sponsoring this video so I'm not going to go too much into it uh, so that being said back to the lower uh, so there's multiple ways to do that but if we're going to go to 
um, the other options for the lower. Again, buffer tube, buffer, buffer spring, it all has um, intertwined into the lower receiver. I did cover some of it on the upper, but that all goes right here, uh, the buffer tube. I think I would learn how to keep track of all this stuff by now, but the buffer tube goes here with your buffer spring in it. You would have your stock. There's the buffer tube and the stock. So your buffer tube would screw in here. You'd have a plate on it as well. Your stock would go here. You'd adjust it where you want it. The spring goes in your buffer tube. Yep, this whole thing goes in here. And there's your Firing, it all works together. But again, you can do multiple calibers. You know, 22, 5.56, 223, all in one gun. If you want to change up the gun, you can do 350 Legend, you would just need a new barrel and a new magazine. You can also do a 300 Blackout the same way. Take out the barrel, take out the mag, put new in. I actually have a 300 Blackout magazine right here. So you can see the difference. Because I can't. But they're 300 Blackout is slightly shorter than the 5.56 five, and that might be the round count I'm not positive. You want to show the top? Nope they're both 30 round magazines so they're both 30 round mags so the three in the black are slightly shorter um, it is designed differently you can feel it's a little different a little bulkier um, so these are P mags they're also aluminum mags P is for plastic A mags are aluminum so just a little random fact to keep in mind. Now, in addition to 300 Blackout, 300 Blackout is usually best around a seven to 10 inch barrel. You get your most out of a 11 inch, 11 and a half inch barrel with 5.56. You can put 16 inch, um, but you'd be fine with a pistol. Um, some people think you get more accuracy with longer barrels. There is a point at which the barrel is longer than you need it. That's a personal preference of the shooter. What are you gonna use it for? Um, this is a perfectly good range gun once I put it back together, but it's entirely, again, up to the shooter. What are you gonna use it for? Um, if you don't want 5.56, 223, 350 Legends, a hunting round, if you don't want that, you can go 224 Valkyrie. I was told that can go up to 1300 yards. That's a long range, um, smaller round, a fast round of the AR-15. You do 6.8 SPC or SPC-2. I'm not sure what the difference on those two are, if it's even two different ones, but I've seen them listed for both. Lunkers, I know, absolutely loves the 6.8. Um, he's trying out the 6.5 Creedmoor. That is an AR-10 round, so it's useless um, for AR-15s. Uh, if you do, uh, you can do 6.8. That is the same bolt carrier group and everything. You just need a new barrel and new magazines as a 224 Valkyrie. Uh, believe it or not, they use the same bolt carrier group and everything else is the same except the barrel and the mags. You can also do a 458 SOCOM, 50 caliber Beowulf if you want to go big bore. Um, there's also a 45 Raptor, I believe. Um, you can also do pistol calibers, but those usually have a different lower receiver. They do have conversion kits. Again, and usually those go into the upper receiver. Um, there's many ways that you can assemble this. Um, there's also 450 Bushmaster that you can put in this bad boy. Uh, that is a legal hunting round in Ohio. It is a big bore round and um, the last time I shot a target with it, I decimated the target, so I don't think I need that much on a deer. So that's why I like 350 Legend for hunting in the state of Ohio. <coughs> and my wife just sneezed. So, yep. excuse me. That just happened. Um, but, um, bless you, by the way. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. So, it really comes down to what do you want in your rifle. And this is where you start. Uh, if you want the most experience, and you're sure it won't overwhelm you, you need some machining knowledge or you need to be able to machine, you can go with the 80% lower and it's an untraceable ghost gun. If you wanna do the regular lower, you're gonna pay, if you get on sale on Anderson Low, it will cost around 45 to 50, Palmetto State will be about the same. You can go higher, they can go up to, I've seen it as high as 500. Um, and it really just depends on what you're looking for out of the lower. The upper receiver will run you somewhere similar. You can get sets. Um, AR-15s are pretty universal. Um, just be careful where you're ordering it. Again, I cannot stress this enough. First of all, you won't get a lower receiver from China, but I will stress it. Do not buy AR-15 parts from China. Do not buy AR-15 parts from China. You will not get mil-spec the way you expect. And if you do that, 
you can expect that the parts will not fit correctly. I will give you an example. I cannot tell you how many buddies I have telling me that AR-15 upper receiver that they got from China, in fact, I'm fairly certain I got it in this box. So they said that this was a mil spec lower or upper receiver. That's what this was, a mil spec upper receiver. Looks identical, it just doesn't have that side charger on it. Um, here's the rub. The problem with this receiver is that the standard charging handle, when the bolt pair group is in it, hear that grinding? Yeah, that's not mil spec. This is not anodized. I don't know what this crap is. It's, it's just not. So don't buy it from China. Put the bulk here you can. Now, when you use a standard T, usually the gun will cycle. You hear it, you feel it, you know it's not right. But what happens when you switch this out? with something like a Falcon 37 or a Radi Radeon or a Devil Dog Concept side charger, which I am in love with. I will tell you right now, the better quality charging handles do not cycle in a, they just don't. They, these, these upper receivers from China, I have had guys send me several that I've checked out. They are not mil spec, they're not. Whatever the coating is, whatever the diameter up there is, it grinds on that charging handle and slows it down so the gun won't go in back in the battery. Um, so if you're going to use this, you do not have options. You have to use a cheap standard run of the mill charging handle. Um, yes, we have a yellow jacket in the garage. This too. Well, next to it is a stink bug. Unless there's one somewhere else. But anyways, uh, focusing on it here now. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a good option to go. Do not go China. Besides, I think there's a law in the federal government, and don't quote me, but I think there's a law that says you can only have one foreign part on your AR in order for it to be legal, anything more, and it becomes um, an import is what I understand. I don't know if that's true, but, or there's something about that. And so regardless, Chinese parts are not the same. So I would strongly recommend American made all the way, hands down, bar none. Just you can go cheap in America. You don't have to go cheap overseas. You're gonna pay more for shipping and wait six to eight weeks to get it anyway, so you might as well get it here. And at six to eight weeks, you can get the extra 10 bucks uh, to just get it here. So long story short, uh, this is low receiver, upper receiver, get it here. Also shout out to Vortex. I love their crossfire shoes. I love all Vortex scopes. Um, they're kind of Vortex, Ruger, Smith & Wesson. They're my fanboy crush. Um, not really a Glock guy. I am a uh, quality guy. Vortex. If you need a good quality scope for your AR, go Vortex. Um, heads up, folks. I do have in the description below some uh, Legal Shield, USCCA. I'll try and get that in the description. I'm still trying to get that link. Um, and the Bearded Struggle. I'll be doing a tutorial on that as well. Um, and I will put the links in the description below. Bearded Struggle. I'll give you a 15% discount coupon code that you can use. Um, and I will be also including, uh, within the next few weeks, a, uh, Amazon link, um, that I will be putting some products on there as well. Um, that being said, again, go American and just, if you do something like this, if you have any questions, go ahead and message me. Um, again, Buckeye blessed. Uh, thanks everyone. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye now.